The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR, commonly known as the Soviet Union, was a socialist state in Eurasia that existed from 30 December 1922 to 26 December 1991. Nominally a union of multiple national Soviet republics, its government and economy were highly centralized. The country was a one-party state, governed by the Communist Party with Moscow as its capital in its largest republic, the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic Russian SFSR. Other major urban centers were Leningrad, Kiev, Minsk, Alma-Ata, and Novosibirsk. Extending across the entirety of Northern Asia and much of Eastern Europe, the Soviet Union had spanned 11 time zones and incorporated a wide range of environments and landforms. From northwest to southeast, the Soviet Union shared land borders with Norway, Finland, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, China, Mongolia, and North Korea. It shared its maritime borders with Japan by the Sea of Okhotsk and the U.S. state of Alaska across the Bering Strait. With an area of 22,402,200 square kilometers, 8,649,500 square miles, the Soviet Union was the largest country in the world by area, covering more than one eighth of the Earth's inhabited land area, and the third most populous, with over 288 million people as of 1989, with 80% of the population living in the western European part of the country. The Soviet Union had its roots in the October Revolution of 1917, when the Bolsheviks led by Vladimir Lenin overthrew the Russian provisional government which had replaced Tsar Nicholas II during World War I in 1922. The Soviet Union was formed by the Treaty on the Creation of the USSR which legalized the unification of the Russian, Transcaucasian, Ukrainian and Byelorussian republics that had occurred from 1918. Following Lenin's death in 1924 and a brief power struggle, Joseph Stalin came to power in the mid-1920s. Stalin committed the state's ideology to Marxism-Leninism which he created and constructed a command economy which led to a period of rapid industrialization and collectivization. During this period of totalitarian rule, political paranoia fermented and the late 1930s Great Purge removed Stalin's opponents within and outside of the party via arbitrary arrests and persecutions of many people, resulting in over 600,000 deaths. Suppression of political critics and forced labor were carried out by Stalin's government. In 1933, a major famine that became known as the Holodomor in Soviet Ukraine struck multiple Soviet grain growing regions, causing the deaths of some 3 to 7 million people. In August 1939, days before the start of World War II, the Soviets signed the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact agreeing to non aggression with Germany, after which the two countries invaded Poland in September 1939. In June 1941, the pact collapsed as Germany turned to attack the Soviet Union, opening the largest and bloodiest theater of war in history. Soviet war casualties accounted for the highest proportion of the conflict in the effort of acquiring the upper hand over Axis forces at intense battles such as Stalingrad and Kursk. The territories overtaken by the Red Army became satellite states of the Soviet Union and the post-war division of Europe into capitalist and communist halves would lead to increased tensions with the West, led by the United States of America. The Cold War emerged by 1947 as the Eastern Bloc, united under the Warsaw Pact in 1955, confronted the Western Bloc, united under NATO in 1949. On 5 March 1953, Stalin died and was eventually succeeded by Nikita Khrushchev, who in 1956 denounced Stalin and began the destalinization of Soviet society through the Khrushchev thaw. The Soviet Union took an early lead in the space race, with the first artificial satellite and the first human spaceflight. Dissatisfied with Khrushchev's policies, the Communist Party's conservative wing led a coup d'état against Khrushchev in 1964, quietly ousting him without any bloodshed. In the early 1970s, there was a brief détente of relations with the United States, but tensions resumed with the Soviet-Afghan War in 1979. In the mid-1980s, the last Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, sought to reform and liberalize the economy through his policies of glasnost openness and perestroika restructuring. Under Gorbachev, the role of the Communist Party in governing the state was removed from the Constitution, causing a surge of severe political instability to set in. The Cold War ended during his tenure. In 1989, Soviet satellite states in Eastern Europe overthrew their respective communist governments. 
With the rise of strong nationalist and separatist movements inside the Union republics, Gorbachev tried to avert a dissolution of the Soviet Union in the post-Cold War era. A March 1991 referendum, boycotted by some republics, resulted in a majority of participating citizens voting in favor of preserving the Union as a renewed federation. Gorbachev's power was greatly diminished after Russian President Boris Yeltsin played a high-profile role in facing down an abortive August 1991 coup d'état attempted by Communist Party hardliners. On 25 December 1991, Gorbachev resigned and the remaining 12 constituent republics emerged as independent post-Soviet states. The Russian Federation—formerly the Russian SFSR— assumed the Soviet Union's rights and obligations and is recognized as the successor state of the Soviet Union. In summing up the international ramifications of these events, Vladislav Zubok stated, "...the collapse of the Soviet Empire was an event of epical geopolitical, military, ideological and economic significance." Throughout its existence, the Soviet Union was a powerhouse of many significant technological achievements and innovations of the 20th century, including the world's first human-made satellite and the launching of the first humans in space. The country had the world's second largest economy and the largest standing military in the world. The Soviet Union was recognized as one of the five nuclear weapons states and possessed the largest stockpile of weapons of mass destruction. It was a founding permanent member of the United Nations Security Council as well as a member of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe OSCE, the World Federation of Trade Unions WFTU, and the leading member of the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance CMEA, and the Warsaw Pact. Topic. Name The word. Soviet is derived from a Russian word meaning council, assembly, advice, harmony, concord and all ultimately deriving from the Proto-Slavic verbal stem of vet iti, to inform, related to Slavic vest, news, English, wise, the root in, ad vis or, which came to English through French, or the Dutch wetten, to know, cf, wetenschap meaning, science. The word Sovietnik means, counselor. A number of organizations in Russian history were called Council Russian. So, for example, in the Russian Empire the State Council, which functioned from 1810 to 1917, was referred to as a Council of Ministers after the Revolt of 1905. During the Georgian Affair, Vladimir Lenin envisioned an expression of great Russian ethnic chauvinism by Joseph Stalin and his supporters, calling for these nation-states to join Russia as semi-independent parts of a greater union, which he initially named as the Union of Soviet Republics of Europe and Asia Russian, Soyuz Sovetsky Respublik Evropy i Azi tr. Soyuz Sovetskik Respublik Evropy i Azi. Stalin initially resisted the proposal, but ultimately accepted it, although with Lenin's agreement changed the name of the newly proposed state to the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, albeit all the republics began as Socialist Soviet, and did not change to the other order until 1936. In addition, in the national languages of several republics the word Council, Conciliar, in the respective language was only quite late changed to an adaptation of the Russian Soviet and never in others, e.g. Ukraine. In some cases, due to the length of its name the state was referred to as the Soviet Union or the USSR, especially when used in the Western media. It was also informally called Russia and its citizens Russians, though that was technically incorrect since Russia was only one of the republics. Topic. Geography, climate and environment With an area of 22,402,200 square kilometers, 8,649,500 square miles, the Soviet Union was the world's largest country, a status that is retained by the Russian Federation. Covering a sixth of Earth's land surface, its size was comparable to that of North America. The European portion accounted for a quarter of the country's area and was the cultural and economic center. The eastern part in Asia extended to the Pacific Ocean to the east and Afghanistan to the south, and, except some areas in Central Asia, was much less populous. It spanned over 10,000 kilometers 6, miles east to west across 11 time zones, and over 7,200 kilometers 4, miles north to south. 
It had five climate zones, tundra, taiga, steppes, desert and mountains. The Soviet Union had the world's longest border, like Russia, measuring over 60,000 kilometers miles, or one and a half circumferences of Earth. Two-thirds of it was a coastline. Across the Bering Strait was the United States. The Soviet Union bordered Afghanistan, China, Czechoslovakia, Finland, Hungary, Iran, Mongolia, North Korea, Norway, Poland, Romania, and Turkey from 1945 to 1991. The Soviet Union's highest mountain was Communism Peak now Ismoil Simoni Peak in Tajikistan, at 7,495 metres feet. The Soviet Union also included most of the world's largest lakes, the Caspian Sea shared with Iran, and Lake Baikal, the world's largest and deepest freshwater lake that is also an internal body of water in Russia. History The last Russian Tsar, Nicholas II, ruled the Russian Empire until his abdication in March 1917 in the aftermath of the February Revolution, due in part to the strain of fighting in World War I, which lacked public support. A short-lived Russian provisional government took power, to be overthrown in the October Revolution NS of November 1917 by revolutionaries led by the Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin. The Soviet Union was officially established in December 1922 with the Union of the Russian, Ukrainian, Byelorussian, and Transcaucasian Soviet republics, each ruled by local Bolshevik parties. Despite the foundation of the Soviet state as a federative entity of many constituent republics, each with its own political and administrative entities, the term, Soviet Russia, strictly applicable only to the Russian Federative Socialist Republic, was often applied to the entire country by non-Soviet writers and politicians. <laughs> Revolution and foundation Modern revolutionary activity in the Russian Empire began with the Decembrist Revolt of 1825. Although serfdom was abolished in 1861, it was done on terms unfavorable to the peasants and served to encourage revolutionaries. A parliament—the State Duma—was established in 1906 after the Russian Revolution of 1905, but Tsar Nicholas II resisted attempts to move from absolute to constitutional monarchy. Social unrest continued and was aggravated during World War I by military defeat and food shortages in major cities. A spontaneous popular uprising in Petrograd, in response to the wartime decay of Russia's economy and morale, culminated in the February Revolution and the toppling of the imperial government in March 1917. The Tsarist autocracy was replaced by the Russian Provisional Government, which intended to conduct elections to the Russian Constituent Assembly and to continue fighting on the side of the Entente in World War I. At the same time, workers' councils, known in Russian as Soviets, sprang up across the country. The Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, pushed for socialist revolution in the Soviets and on the streets. On 7 November 1917, the Red Guards stormed the Winter Palace in Petrograd, ending the rule of the Provisional Government and leaving all political power to the Soviets. This event would later be officially known in Soviet bibliographies as the Great October Socialist Revolution. In December, the Bolsheviks signed an armistice with the Central Powers, though by February 1918, fighting had resumed. In March, the Soviets ended involvement in the War for Good and signed the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. A long and bloody civil war ensued between the Reds and the Whites, starting in 1917 and ending in 1923 with the Reds' victory. It included foreign intervention, the execution of the former Tsar and his family, and the famine of 1921, which killed about 5 million people. In March 1921, during a related conflict with Poland, the Peace of Riga was signed, splitting disputed territories in Belarus and Ukraine between the Republic of Poland and Soviet Russia. Soviet Russia had to resolve similar conflicts with the newly established Republic of Finland, the Republic of Estonia, the Republic of Latvia, and the Republic of Lithuania. Topic: Unification of Republics. 
On 28 December 1922, a conference of plenipotentiary delegations from the Russian SFSR, the Transcaucasian SFSR, the Ukrainian SSR and the Byelorussian SSR approved the treaty on the creation of the USSR and the declaration of the creation of the USSR, forming the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. These two documents were confirmed by the First Congress of Soviets of the USSR and signed by the heads of the delegations, Mikhail Kalinin, Mikhail Skakaya, Mikhail Frunz, Grigory Petrovsky, and Alexander Cherviakov, on 30 December 1922. The formal proclamation was made from the stage of the Bolshoi Theater. On 1 February 1924, the USSR was recognized by the United Kingdom. The same year, a Soviet constitution was approved, legitimizing the December 1922 Union. An intensive restructuring of the economy, industry and politics of the country began in the early days of Soviet power in 1917. A large part of this was done according to the Bolshevik initial decrees, government documents signed by Vladimir Lenin. One of the most prominent breakthroughs was the GOELRO plan, which envisioned a major restructuring of the Soviet economy based on total electrification of the country. The plan was developed in 1920 and covered a 10 to 15 year period. It included construction of a network of 30 regional power stations, including 10 large hydroelectric power plants, and numerous electric powered large industrial enterprises. The plan became the prototype for subsequent five year plans and was fulfilled by 1931. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin era From its creation, the government in the Soviet Union was based on the one party rule of the Communist Party. Bolsheviks. After the economic policy of war communism during the Russian Civil War, as a prelude to fully developing socialism in the country, the Soviet government permitted some private enterprise to coexist alongside nationalized industry in the 1920s and total food requisition in the countryside was replaced by a food tax. The stated purpose of the one-party state was to ensure that capitalist exploitation would not return to the Soviet Union and that the principles of democratic centralism would be most effective in representing the people's will in a practical manner. Debate over the future of the economy provided the background for a power struggle in the years after Lenin's death in 1924. Initially, Lenin was to be replaced by a troika consisting of Grigory Zinoviev of the Ukrainian SSR, Lev Kamenev of the Russian SFSR, and Joseph Stalin of the Transcaucasian SFSR. On 3 April 1922, Stalin was named the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Lenin had appointed Stalin the head of the Workers and Peasants Inspectorate, which gave Stalin considerable power. By gradually consolidating his influence and isolating and outmaneuvering his rivals within the party, Stalin became the undisputed leader of the Soviet Union and, by the end of the 1920s, established totalitarian rule. In October 1927, Grigory Zinoviev and Leon Trotsky were expelled from the Central Committee and forced into exile. In 1928, Stalin introduced the first five-year plan for building a socialist economy. In place of the internationalism expressed by Lenin throughout the revolution, it aimed to build socialism in one country. In industry, the state assumed control over all existing enterprises and undertook an intensive program of industrialization. In agriculture, rather than adhering to the lead by example policy advocated by Lenin, forced collectivization of farms was implemented all over the country. Famines ensued, causing millions of deaths, surviving kulaks were persecuted and many sent to gulags to do forced labor. Social upheaval continued in the mid-1930s. Stalin's Great Purge resulted in the execution or detainment of many old Bolsheviks, who had participated in the October Revolution with Lenin. According to declassified Soviet archives, the NKVD arrested more than one and a half million people in 1937 and 1938, of whom 681,692 were shot. Over those two years there were an average of over 1,000 executions a day. According to historian Jeffrey Hosking, Excess deaths during the 1930s as a whole were in the range of 10 to 11 million. Although historian Timothy D. Snyder claims that archival evidence suggests a maximum excess mortality of 9 million during the entire Stalin era. Historian and archival researcher Stephen G. Wheatcroft asserts that around a million purposive killings 
can be attributed to Stalinist regime, along with the premature deaths of roughly two million more amongst the repressed populations i.e., in camps, prisons, exile, etc. through criminal negligence. Despite the turmoil of the mid to late 1930s, the Soviet Union developed a powerful industrial economy in the years before World War II. Under the doctrine of state atheism in the Soviet Union, there was a government-sponsored program of forced conversion to atheism conducted by communists. The communist regime targeted religions based on state interests, and while most organized religions were never outlawed, religious property was confiscated, believers were harassed, and religion was ridiculed while atheism was propagated in schools. In 1925 the government founded the League of Militant Atheists to intensify the propaganda campaign. Accordingly, although personal expressions of religious faith were not explicitly banned, a strong sense of social stigma was imposed on them by the official structures and mass media and it was generally considered unacceptable for members of certain professions teachers, state bureaucrats, soldiers to be openly religious. As for the Russian Orthodox Church, Soviet authorities sought to control it and, in times of national crisis, to exploit it for the regime's own purposes, but their ultimate goal was to eliminate it. During the first five years of Soviet power, the Bolsheviks executed 28 Russian Orthodox bishops and over 1,200 Russian Orthodox priests. Many others were imprisoned or exiled. Believers were harassed and persecuted. Most seminaries were closed, and the publication of most religious material was prohibited. By 1941 only 500 churches remained open out of about 54,000 in existence prior to World War I. Topic. 1930s Closer cooperation between the Soviet Union and the West developed in the early 1930s. From 1932 to 1934, the Soviet Union participated in the World Disarmament Conference. In 1933, diplomatic relations between the United States and the USSR were established when in November the newly elected President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, chose to formally recognize Stalin's communist government and negotiated a new trade agreement between the two nations. In September 1934, the Soviet Union joined the League of Nations. After the Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936, the USSR actively supported the Republican forces against the Nationalists, who were supported by Fascist Italy and Nazi Germany. In December 1936, Stalin unveiled a new Soviet constitution. Supporters around the world hailed it as the most democratic constitution imaginable. Historian J. Arch Getty concludes, Many who lauded Stalin's Soviet Union as the most democratic country on earth lived to regret their words. After all, the Soviet Constitution of 1936 was adopted on the eve of the Great Terror of the late 1930s. The thoroughly democratic elections to the first Supreme Soviet permitted only uncontested candidates and took place at the height of the savage violence in 1937. The civil rights, personal freedoms, and democratic forms promised in the Stalin Constitution were trampled almost immediately and remained dead letters until long after Stalin's death. In 1939, the Soviet Union made a dramatic shift toward Nazi Germany. Almost a year after Britain and France had concluded the Munich Agreement with Germany, the Soviet Union made agreements with Germany as well, both militarily and economically during extensive talks. The two countries concluded the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and the German-Soviet Commercial Agreement in August 1939. The Non-Aggression Pact made possible Soviet occupation of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Bessarabia, northern Bukovina, and eastern Poland. In late November, unable to coerce the Republic of Finland by diplomatic means into moving its border 25 kilometers 16 miles back from Leningrad, Joseph Stalin ordered the invasion of Finland. In the east, the Soviet military won several decisive victories during border clashes with the Empire of Japan in 1938 and 1939. However, in April 1941, USSR signed the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact with the Japan, recognizing the territorial integrity of Manchukuo, a Japanese puppet state. Topic: World War II. Although it has been debated whether the Soviet Union intended to invade Germany once it was strong enough, Germany itself broke the treaty and invaded the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1941, starting what was known in the USSR as the 
Great Patriotic War. The Red Army stopped the seemingly invincible German army at the Battle of Moscow, aided by an unusually harsh winter. The Battle of Stalingrad, which lasted from late 1942 to early 1943, dealt a severe blow to the Germans from which they never fully recovered and became a turning point in the war. After Stalingrad, Soviet forces drove through Eastern Europe to Berlin before Germany surrendered in 1945. The German army suffered 80% of its military deaths in the Eastern Front. The same year, the USSR, in fulfillment of its agreement with the Allies at the Yalta Conference, denounced the Soviet Japanese Neutrality Pact in April 1945 and invaded Manchukuo and other Japan controlled territories on 9 August 1945. This conflict ended with a decisive Soviet victory, contributing to the unconditional surrender of Japan and the end of World War II. The Soviet Union suffered greatly in the war, losing around 27 million people. Approximately 2.8 million Soviet POWs died of starvation, mistreatment, or executions in just eight months of 1941-42. During the war, the Soviet Union together with the United States, the United Kingdom and China were considered the big four Allied powers in World War II, and later became the four policemen, which formed the basis of the United Nations Security Council. It emerged as a superpower in the post-war period. Once denied diplomatic recognition by the Western world, the Soviet Union had official relations with practically every nation by the late 1940s. A member of the United Nations at its foundation in 1945, the Soviet Union became one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, which gave it the right to veto any of its resolutions. Memorandum for the President's Special Assistant Harry Hopkins, Washington, D.C., August 10, 1943 In War II Russia occupies a dominant position and is the decisive factor looking toward the defeat of the Axis in Europe. While in Sicily the forces of Great Britain and the United States are being opposed by two German divisions, the Russian front is receiving attention of approximately 200 German divisions. Whenever the Allies open a second front on the continent, it will be decidedly a secondary front to that of Russia, theirs will continue to be the main effort. Without Russia in the war, the Axis cannot be defeated in Europe, and the position of the United Nations becomes precarious. Similarly, Russia's post-war position in Europe will be a dominant one. With Germany crushed, there is no power in Europe to oppose her tremendous military forces. The Soviet Union maintained its status as one of the world's two superpowers for four decades through its hegemony in Eastern Europe, military strength, economic strength, aid to developing countries, and scientific research, especially in space technology and weaponry. Cold War During the immediate post-war period, the Soviet Union rebuilt and expanded its economy, while maintaining its strictly centralized control. It took effective control over most of the countries of Eastern Europe except Yugoslavia and Albania, turning them into satellite states. The Soviet Union bound its satellite states in a military alliance, the Warsaw Pact, in 1955, and an economic organization, the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance or Comicon, a counterpart to the European Economic Community, from 1949 to 1991. The Soviet Union concentrated on its own recovery, seizing and transferring most of Germany's industrial plants, and it exacted war reparations from East Germany, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria using Soviet-dominated joint enterprises. It also instituted trading arrangements deliberately designed to favor the Soviet Union. Moscow controlled the Communist parties that ruled the satellite states, and they followed orders from the Kremlin. Historian Mark Kramer concludes, the net outflow of resources from Eastern Europe to the Soviet Union was approximately $15 billion to $20 billion in the first decade after World War II, an amount roughly equal to the total aid provided by the United States to Western Europe under the Marshall Plan. Later, the Comic-Con supplied aid to the eventually victorious Communist Party of China, and its influence grew elsewhere in the world. Fearing its ambitions, the Soviet Union's wartime allies, the United Kingdom and the United States, became its enemies. In the ensuing Cold War, the two sides clashed indirectly in proxy wars. <laughs> Khrushchev era Stalin died on 5 March 1953. 
Without a mutually agreeable successor, the highest Communist Party officials initially opted to rule the Soviet Union jointly through a troika headed by Georgi Malenkov. This did not last, however, and Nikita Khrushchev eventually won the ensuing power struggle by the mid-1950s. In 1956 he denounced Stalin's use of repression and proceeded to ease controls over party and society. This was known as de-Stalinization. Moscow considered Eastern Europe to be a critically vital buffer zone for the forward defense of its western borders, in case of another major invasion such as the German invasion of 1941. For this reason, the USSR sought to cement its control of the region by transforming the Eastern European countries into satellite states, dependent upon and subservient to its leadership. Soviet military force was used to suppress anti-Stalinist uprisings in Hungary and Poland in 1956. In the late 1950s, a confrontation with China regarding the USSR's rapprochement with the West, and what Mao Zedong perceived as Khrushchev's revisionism, led to the Sino-Soviet split. This resulted in a break throughout the global Marxist-Leninist movement, with the governments in Albania, Cambodia and Somalia choosing to ally with China in place of the USSR. During this period of the late 1950s and early 1960s, the Soviet Union continued to realize scientific and technological exploits in the space race, rivaling the United States, launching the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1 in 1957, a living dog named Laika in 1957, the first human being, Yuri Gagarin in 1961, the first woman in space, Valentina Tereshkova in 1963, Alexei Leonov, the first person to walk in space in 1965. The first soft landing on the Moon by spacecraft Luna 9 in 1966, and the first Moon rovers, Lunokhod 1 and Lunokhod 2. Khrushchev initiated the Thaw, a complex shift in political, cultural, and economic life in the Soviet Union. This included some openness and contact with other nations and new social and economic policies with more emphasis on commodity goods, allowing living standards to rise dramatically while maintaining high levels of economic growth. Censorship was relaxed as well. Khrushchev's reforms in agriculture and administration, however, were generally unproductive. In 1962, he precipitated a crisis with the United States over the Soviet deployment of nuclear missiles in Cuba. An agreement was made between the Soviet Union and the United States to remove enemy nuclear missiles from both Cuba and Turkey, concluding the crisis. This event caused Khrushchev much embarrassment and loss of prestige, resulting in his removal from power in 1964. Era of stagnation The era of stagnation was a period of negative economic, political, and social effects in the Soviet Union, which began during the rule of Leonid Brezhnev and continued under Yuri Andropov and Konstantin Chernenko. Following the ousting of Khrushchev, another period of collective leadership ensued, consisting of Leonid Brezhnev as General Secretary, Alexei Kosygin as Premier and Nikolai Podgorny as Chairman of the Presidium, lasting until Brezhnev established himself in the early 1970s as the preeminent Soviet leader. In 1968, the Soviet Union and Warsaw Pact allies invaded Czechoslovakia to halt the Prague Spring reforms. In the aftermath, Brezhnev justified the invasion along with the earlier invasions of Eastern European states by introducing the Brezhnev Doctrine, which claimed the right of the Soviet Union to violate the sovereignty of any country that attempted to replace Marxism-Leninism with capitalism. Brezhnev presided over a period of détente with the West that resulted in treaties on armament control SALT I, SALT II, anti-ballistic missile treaty while at the same time building up Soviet military might. In October 1977, the Third Soviet Constitution was unanimously adopted. The prevailing mood of the Soviet leadership at the time of Brezhnev's death in 1982 was one of aversion to change. The long period of Brezhnev's rule had come to be dubbed one of standstill, with an aging and ossified top political leadership. Topic. Gorbachev era Two developments dominated the decade that followed, the increasingly apparent crumbling of the Soviet Union's economic and political structures, and the patchwork attempts at reforms to reverse that process. 
Kenneth S. Defies argued in Beyond Oil that the Reagan administration encouraged Saudi Arabia to lower the price of oil to the point where the Soviets could not make a profit selling their oil, so the USSR's hard currency reserves became depleted. Brezhnev's next two successors, transitional figures with deep roots in his tradition, did not last long. Yuri Andropov was 68 years old and Konstantin Chernenko 72 when they assumed power, both died in less than two years. In an attempt to avoid a third short-lived leader, in 1985, the Soviets turned to the next generation and selected Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev made significant changes in the economy and party leadership, called perestroika. His policy of glasnost freed public access to information after decades of heavy government censorship. Gorbachev also moved to end the Cold War. In 1988, the Soviet Union abandoned its nine-year war in Afghanistan and began to withdraw its forces. In the late 1980s, he refused military support to the governments of the Soviet Union's satellite states, which paved the way for revolutions of 1989. With the tearing down of the Berlin Wall and with East Germany and West Germany pursuing unification, the Iron Curtain between the West and Soviet-controlled regions came down. In the late 1980s, the constituent republics of the Soviet Union started legal moves towards potentially declaring sovereignty over their territories, citing Article 72 of the USSR Constitution, which stated that any constituent republic was free to secede. On 7 April 1990, a law was passed allowing a republic to secede if more than two-thirds of its residents voted for it in a referendum. Many held their first free elections in the Soviet era for their own national legislatures in 1990. Many of these legislatures proceeded to produce legislation contradicting the Union laws in what was known as the War of Laws. In 1989, the Russian SFSR, which was then the largest constituent republic with about half of the population, convened a newly elected Congress of People's Deputies. Boris Yeltsin was elected its chairman. On 12 June 1990, the Congress declared Russia's sovereignty over its territory and proceeded to pass laws that attempted to supersede some of the USSR's laws. After a landslide victory of Sajudis in Lithuania, that country declared its independence restored on of March 1990. A referendum for the preservation of the USSR was held on 17 March 1991 in nine republics the remainder having boycotted the vote, with the majority of the population in those nine republics voting for preservation of the Union. The referendum gave Gorbachev a minor boost. In the summer of 1991, the new Union Treaty, which would have turned the Soviet Union into a much looser Union, was agreed upon by eight republics. The signing of the treaty, however, was interrupted by the August coup an attempted coup d'état by hardline members of the government and the KGB who sought to reverse Gorbachev's reforms and reassert the central government's control over the republics. After the coup collapsed, Yeltsin was seen as a hero for his decisive actions, while Gorbachev's power was effectively ended. The balance of power tipped significantly towards the republics. In August 1991, Latvia and Estonia immediately declared the restoration of their full independence following Lithuania's 1990 example. Gorbachev resigned as general secretary in late August, and soon afterward the party's activities were indefinitely suspended—effectively ending its rule. By the fall, Gorbachev could no longer influence events outside Moscow, and he was being challenged even there by Yeltsin, who had been elected president of Russia in July 1991. <laughs> Dissolution The remaining 12 republics continued discussing new, increasingly looser, models of the Union. However, by December all except Russia and Kazakhstan had formally declared independence. During this time, Yeltsin took over what remained of the Soviet government, including the Moscow Kremlin. The final blow was struck on 1 December when Ukraine, the second most powerful republic, voted overwhelmingly for independence. Ukraine's secession ended any realistic chance of the Soviet Union staying together even on a limited scale. On 8 December 1991, the presidents of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus formerly Belorussia, signed the Beloveza Accords, which declared the Soviet Union dissolved and established the Commonwealth of Independent States in its place. While doubts remained over the authority of the Accords to do this, on 21 December 1991, the representatives of all Soviet republics except Georgia signed the Alma-Ata Protocol, which confirmed the Accords. 
On 25 December 1991, Gorbachev resigned as the president of the USSR, declaring the office extinct. He turned the powers that had been vested in the presidency over to Yeltsin. That night, the Soviet flag was lowered for the last time, and the Russian tricolor was raised in its place. The following day, the Supreme Soviet, the highest governmental body of the Soviet Union, voted both itself and the Soviet Union out of existence. This is generally recognized as marking the official, final dissolution of the Soviet Union as a functioning state. The Soviet army originally remained under overall CIS command, but was soon absorbed into the different military forces of the newly independent states. The few remaining Soviet institutions that had not been taken over by Russia ceased to function by the end of 1991. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union on 26 December 1991, Russia was internationally recognized as its legal successor on the international stage. To that end, Russia voluntarily accepted all Soviet foreign debt and claimed overseas Soviet properties as its own. Under the 1992 Lisbon Protocol, Russia also agreed to receive all nuclear weapons remaining in the territory of other former Soviet republics. Since then, the Russian Federation has assumed the Soviet Union's rights and obligations. Ukraine has refused to recognize exclusive Russian claims to succession of the USSR and claimed such status for Ukraine as well, which was codified in Articles 7 and 8 of its 1991 Law on Legal Succession of Ukraine. Since its independence in 1991, Ukraine has continued to pursue claims against Russia in foreign courts, seeking to recover its share of the foreign property that was owned by the USSR. The dissolution of the Soviet Union was followed by a severe economic contraction and catastrophic fall in living standards in post-Soviet states including a rapid increase in poverty, crime, corruption, unemployment, homelessness, rates of disease, demographic losses, income inequality and the rise of an oligarchical class, along with decreases in calorie intake, life expectancy, adult literacy, and income. Between 1988-1989 and 1993-1995, the Gini ratio increased by an average of 9 points for all former socialist countries. The economic shocks that accompanied wholesale privatization were associated with sharp increases in mortality. Data shows Russia, Kazakhstan, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia saw a tripling of unemployment and a 42% increase in male death rates between 1991 and 1994. In the following decades, only five or six of the post-communist states are on a path to joining the wealthy capitalist West while most are falling behind, some to such an extent that it will take over 50 years to catch up to where they were before the fall of the Soviet bloc. In summing up the international ramifications of these events, Vladislav Zubok stated, the collapse of the Soviet Empire was an event of epical geopolitical, military, ideological, and economic significance. Topic. Post-Soviet states The analysis of the succession of states with respect to the 15 post-Soviet states is complex. The Russian Federation is seen as the legal continuator state and is for most purposes the heir to the Soviet Union. It retained ownership of all former Soviet embassy properties, as well as the old Soviet UN membership and permanent membership on the Security Council. There are additionally four states that claim independence from the other internationally recognized post-Soviet states, but possess limited international recognition, Abkhazia, Nagorno-Karabakh, South Ossetia, and Transnistria. The Chechen separatist movement of the Chechen Republic of Ichkaria lacks any international recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign affairs Organizations. <laughs> 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 Stalin always made the final policy decisions, 1925–1953. Otherwise Soviet foreign policy was set by the Commission on the Foreign Policy of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, or by the party's highest body the Politburo. Operations were handled by the separate Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It was known as the People's Commissariat for Foreign Affairs or Narcomindel, until 1946. The most influential spokesmen were Georgi Chicharin (1872–1936), Maxim Litvinov (1876–1951), Vyacheslav Molotov (1890–1986), Andrei Vyshinsky (1883–1954), and Andrei Gromyko (1909–1989). Intellectuals were based in the Moscow State Institute of International Relations. 
1943, Comintern 1919 to 1943, or Communist International, was an international communist organization based in the Kremlin that advocated world communism. The Comintern intended to struggle by all available means, including armed force, for the overthrow of the international bourgeoisie and the creation of an international Soviet republic as a transition stage to the complete abolition of the state. It was abolished as a conciliatory measure toward Britain and the United States. Comicon, the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance Russian, Soviet Ekonomiskij Vizimopomosi Soviet Ekonomikiskoy Vizimopomoshchi, Safe Sev was an economic organization from 1949 to 1991 under Soviet control that comprised the countries of the Eastern Bloc along with a number of communist states elsewhere in the world. Moscow was concerned about the Marshall Plan and Comicon was meant to prevent countries in the Soviet sphere of influence from moving towards that of the Americans and Southeast Asia. Comicon was the Eastern Bloc's reply to the formation in Western Europe of the Organization for European Economic Cooperation OEEC. The Warsaw Pact was a collective defense alliance formed in 1955 among the Soviet Union and seven Soviet satellite states of Central and Eastern Europe during the Cold War. The Warsaw Pact was the military complement to the Comicon, the regional economic organization for the socialist states of Central and Eastern Europe. The Warsaw Pact was created in reaction to the integration of West Germany into NATO. The Common Form 1947 to 1956, informally the Communist Information Bureau and officially the Information Bureau of the Communist and Workers' Parties, was the first official agency of the international communist movement since the dissolution of the Comintern in 1943. Its role was to coordinate actions between communist parties under Soviet direction. Stalin used it to order Western European Communist parties to abandon their exclusively parliamentarian line and instead concentrate on politically impeding the operations of the Marshall Plan. It also coordinated international aid to communist insurgents during the Greek Civil War in 1947–1949, it expelled Yugoslavia in 1948 after Josip Broz Tito insisted on an independent program. Its newspaper, For a Lasting Peace, for a People's Democracy, promoted Stalin's positions. The Common Form's concentration on Europe meant a de-emphasis on world revolution in Soviet foreign policy. By enunciating a uniform ideology, it allowed the constituent parties to focus on personalities rather than issues. Topic. Early Soviet foreign policies 1919 The communist leadership the Soviet Union intensely debated foreign policy issues and changed directions several times. Even after Stalin assumed dictatorial control in the late 1920s, there were debates and he frequently changed positions. The first stage 1917 to 1921 assumed that communist revolutions would break out very soon in every major industrial country and it was the Soviet responsibility to assist them. The Comintern was the weapon of choice. A few revolutions did break out, but they were quickly suppressed the longest lasting one was in Hungary. The Hungarian Soviet Republic lasted only from 21 March 1919 to 1 August 1919. The Russian Bolsheviks were in no position to give any help. By 1921, the second stage came with the realization by Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin that capitalism had stabilized itself in Europe and there would not be any widespread revolutions anytime soon. It became the duty of the Russian Bolsheviks to protect what they had in Russia, and avoid military confrontations that might destroy their bridgehead. Russia was now in it a pariah state, along with Germany. The two came to terms in 1922 with the Treaty of Rapallo that settled long-standing grievances. At the same time the two countries secretly set up training programs for illegal German army and air force operations at hidden camps in the Soviet Union. At the same time, Moscow stopped threatening other states, and instead worked to open peaceful relationships in terms of trade, and diplomatic recognition. United Kingdom, dismissed the warnings of Winston Churchill and a few others about a continuing communist threat, and opened trade relations and de facto diplomatic recognition in 1922. There was hope for a settlement of the pre-war Tsarist debts, but that issue was repeatedly postponed. Formal recognition came when the new Labour Party came to power in 1924. All the other major countries opened trade relationships. Henry Ford opened large-scale business relationships with the Soviets in the late 1920s, hoping it would lead to a long-term peace. 
Finally, in 1933, the United States officially recognized the Soviet Union, a decision backed by public opinion and especially by American business interests that expected a new profitable market would open up. A third stage came in the late 1920s and early 1930s, when Stalin ordered communist parties across the world to strongly oppose non communist political parties, labor unions, or other organizations on the left. Stalin reversed himself in 1934 with the Popular Front program that called on all communist parties to join together with all anti-fascist political, labor, and organizational forces that were opposed to fascism, especially of the Nazi variety. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II era 1939 to 1945. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cold War era 1945 to 1991. Topic. Politics There were three power hierarchies in the Soviet Union, the legislature represented by the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union, the government represented by the Council of Ministers, and the Communist Party of the Soviet Union CPSU, the only legal party and the ultimate policymaker in the country. Topic. Communist Party At the top of the Communist Party was the Central Committee, elected at party congresses and conferences. The Central Committee in turn voted for a Politburo called the Presidium between 1952 to 1966, Secretariat and the General Secretary first Secretary from 1953 to 1966, the de facto highest office in the Soviet Union. Depending on the degree of power consolidation, it was either the Politburo as a collective body or the General Secretary, who always was one of the Politburo members, that effectively led the party and the country except for the period of the highly personalized authority of Stalin, exercised directly through his position in the Council of Ministers rather than the Politburo after 1941. They were not controlled by the general party membership, as the key principle of the party organization was democratic centralism, demanding strict subordination to higher bodies, and elections went uncontested, endorsing the candidates proposed from above. The Communist Party maintained its dominance over the state largely through its control over the system of appointments. All senior government officials and most deputies of the Supreme Soviet were members of the CPSU. Of the party heads themselves, Stalin in 1941-1953 and Khrushchev in 1958-1964 were premiers. Upon the forced retirement of Khrushchev, the party leader was prohibited from this kind of double membership, but the later general secretaries for at least some part of their tenure occupied the largely ceremonial position of chairman of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet, the nominal head of state. The institutions at lower levels were overseen and at times supplanted by primary party organizations, however, in practice the degree of control the party was able to exercise over the state bureaucracy, particularly after the death of Stalin, was far from total, with the bureaucracy pursuing different interests that were at times in conflict with the party. Nor was the party itself monolithic from top to bottom, although factions were officially banned. Topic. Government. The Supreme Soviet successor of the Congress of Soviets and Central Executive Committee was nominally the highest state body for most of the Soviet history, at first acting as a rubber stamp institution, approving and implementing all decisions made by the party. However, the powers and functions of the Supreme Soviet were extended in the late 1950s, 1960s and 1970s, including the creation of new state commissions and committees. It gained additional powers relating to the approval of the five-year plans and the Soviet government budget. The Supreme Soviet elected a presidium to wield its power between plenary sessions, ordinarily held twice a year, and appointed the Supreme Court, the Procurator General and the Council of Ministers known before 1946 as the Council of People's Commissars, headed by the Chairman Premier and managing an enormous bureaucracy responsible for the administration of the economy and society. State and party structures of the constituent republics largely emulated the structure of the central institutions, although the Russian SFSR, unlike the other constituent republics, for most of its history had no republican branch of the CPSU, being ruled directly by the union-wide party until 1990. Local authorities were organized likewise into party committees, local Soviets and executive committees. 
While the state system was nominally federal, the party was unitary. The state security police, the KGB and its predecessor agencies, played an important role in Soviet politics. It was instrumental in the Stalinist terror, but after the death of Stalin, the state security police was brought under strict party control. Under Yuri Andropov, KGB chairman in 1967 to 1982 and general secretary from 1982 to 1984, the KGB engaged in the suppression of political dissent and maintained an extensive network of informers, reasserting itself as a political actor to some extent independent of the party state structure, culminating in the anti-corruption campaign targeting high party officials in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Topic. Separation of power and reform The Union Constitutions, which were promulgated in 1918, 1924, 1936 and 1977, did not limit state power. No formal separation of powers existed between the party, Supreme Soviet and Council of Ministers that represented executive and legislative branches of the government. The system was governed less by statute than by informal conventions, and no settled mechanism of leadership succession existed. Bitter and at times deadly power struggles took place in the Politburo after the deaths of Lenin and Joseph Stalin, as well as after Khrushchev's dismissal, itself due to a decision by both the Politburo and the Central Committee. All leaders of the Communist Party before Gorbachev died in office, except Georgi Malenkov and Khrushchev, both dismissed from the party leadership amid internal struggle within the party. Between 1988 and 1990, facing considerable opposition, Mikhail Gorbachev enacted reforms shifting power away from the highest bodies of the party and making the Supreme Soviet less dependent on them. The Congress of People's Deputies was established, the majority of whose members were directly elected in competitive elections held in March 1989. The Congress now elected the Supreme Soviet, which became a full-time parliament, much stronger than before. For the first time since the 1920s, it refused to rubber stamp proposals from the party and council of ministers. In 1990, Gorbachev introduced and assumed the position of the president of the Soviet Union, concentrated power in his executive office, independent of the party, and subordinated the government, now renamed the cabinet of ministers of the USSR, to himself. Tensions grew between the union-wide authorities under Gorbachev, reformists led in Russia by Boris Yeltsin and controlling the newly elected Supreme Soviet of the Russian SFSR, and communist hardliners. On 19–21 August 1991, a group of hardliners staged an abortive coup attempt. Following the failed coup, the State Council of the Soviet Union became the highest organ of state power in the period of transition. Gorbachev resigned as general secretary, only remaining president for the final months of the existence of the USSR. Topic. Judicial system The judiciary was not independent of the other branches of government. The Supreme Court supervised the lower courts People's Court and applied the law as established by the Constitution or as interpreted by the Supreme Soviet. The Constitutional Oversight Committee reviewed the constitutionality of laws and acts. The Soviet Union used the inquisitorial system of Roman law, where the judge, procurator, and defense attorney collaborate to establish the truth. Administrative divisions Constitutionally, the USSR was a federation of constituent union republics, which were either unitary states, such as Ukraine or Bielorussia SSRs, or federal states, such as Russia or Transcaucasia SFSRs, all four being the founding republics who signed the treaty on the creation of the USSR in December 1922. In 1924, during the national delimitation in Central Asia, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan were formed from parts of the Russia's Turkestan ASSR and two Soviet dependencies, the Khorizm and Bukharin SSRs. In 1929, Tajikistan was split off from the Uzbekistan SSR. With the constitution of 1936, the Transcaucasian SFSR was dissolved, resulting in its constituent republics of Armenia, Georgia and Azerbaijan being elevated to Union republics, while Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzia were split off from Russian SFSR, resulting in the same status. In August 1940, Moldavia was formed from parts of the Ukraine and Bessarabia and northern Bukovina. 
Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania SSRs were also admitted into the Union which was not recognized by most of the international community and was considered an illegal occupation. Karelia was split off from Russia as a Union Republic in March 1940 and was reabsorbed in 1956. Between July 1956 and September 1991, there were 15 Union Republics see map below. .While nominally a Union of Equals, in practice the Soviet Union was dominated by Russians. The domination was so absolute that for most of the Soviet Union's existence, it was commonly but incorrectly referred to as Russia. While the RSFSR was technically only one republic within the larger Union, it was by far the largest both in terms of population and geography, most powerful, and most highly developed. Historian Matthew White wrote that it was an open secret that the Soviet Union's federal structure was window dressing for Russian dominance. For that reason, the people of the Soviet Union were usually called Russians, not Soviets, since everyone knew who really ran the show. Topic. Economy The Soviet Union became the first country to adopt a planned economy, whereby production and distribution of goods were centralized and directed by the government. The first Bolshevik experience with a command economy was the policy of war communism, which involved the nationalization of industry, centralized distribution of output, coercive requisition of agricultural production, and attempts to eliminate money circulation, private enterprises and free trade. After the severe economic collapse, Lenin replaced war communism by the New Economic Policy in 1921, legalizing free trade and private ownership of small businesses. The economy quickly recovered, after a long debate among the members of Politburo about the course of economic development. By 1928 1929, upon gaining control of the country, Joseph Stalin abandoned NEP and pushed for full central planning, starting forced collectivization of agriculture and enacting draconian labor legislation. Resources were mobilized for rapid industrialization, which greatly expanded Soviet capacity in heavy industry and capital goods during the 1930s. A main motivation for industrialization was preparation for war, mostly due to distrust of the outside capitalistic world. As a result, the USSR was transformed from a largely agrarian economy into a great industrial power, leading the way for its emergence as a superpower after World War II. The war hugely devastated Soviet economy and infrastructure and they required extensive reconstruction. By the early 1940s, the Soviet economy had become relatively self-sufficient, for most of the period until the creation of Comic-Con, only a very small share of domestic products was traded internationally. After the creation of the Eastern Bloc, external trade rose rapidly. Still, the influence of the world economy on the USSR was limited by fixed domestic prices and a state monopoly on foreign trade. Grain and sophisticated consumer manufacturers became major import articles from around the 1960s. During the arms race of the Cold War, the Soviet economy was burdened by military expenditures, heavily lobbied for by a powerful bureaucracy dependent on the arms industry. At the same time, the Soviet Union became the largest arms exporter to the Third World. Significant amounts of Soviet resources during the Cold War were allocated in aid to the other socialist states. From the 1930s until its dissolution in late 1991, the way the Soviet economy operated remained essentially unchanged. The economy was formally directed by central planning, carried out by Gosplan and organized in five-year plans. However, in practice the plans were highly aggregated and provisional, subject to ad hoc intervention by superiors. All key economic decisions were taken by the political leadership. Allocated resources and plan targets were normally denominated in rubles rather than in physical goods. Credit was discouraged, but widespread. Final allocation of output was achieved through relatively decentralized, unplanned contracting. Although in theory prices were legally set from above, in practice they were often negotiated, and informal horizontal links between producer factories etc. were widespread. A number of basic services were state-funded, such as education and health care. In the manufacturing sector, heavy industry and defense were prioritized over consumer goods. Consumer goods, particularly outside large cities, were often scarce, of poor quality and limited choice. 
Under command economy, consumers had almost no influence on production, so the changing demands of a population with growing incomes could not be satisfied by supplies at rigidly fixed prices. A massive unplanned second economy grew up at low levels alongside the planned one, providing some of the goods and services that the planners could not. Legalization of some elements of the decentralized economy was attempted with the reform of 1965. Although statistics of the Soviet economy are notoriously unreliable and its economic growth difficult to estimate precisely, by most accounts, the economy continued to expand until the mid-1980s. During the 1950s and 1960s, it had comparatively high growth and was catching up to the West. However, after 1970, the growth, while still positive, steadily declined much more quickly and consistently than in other countries. Despite a rapid increase in the capital stock, the rate of capital increase was only surpassed by Japan. Overall, between 1960 and 1989, the growth rate of per capita income in the Soviet Union was slightly above the world average based on 102 countries. According to Stanley Fisher and William Easterly, growth could have been faster. By their calculation, per capita income of Soviet Union in 1989 should have been twice higher than it was, considering the amount of investment, education and population. The authors attribute this poor performance to low productivity of capital in the Soviet Union. Stephen Rosenfield states that the standard of living declined due to Stalin's despotism, and while there was a brief improvement after his death, it lapsed into stagnation. In 1987, Mikhail Gorbachev tried to reform and revitalize the economy with his program of perestroika. His policies relaxed state control over enterprises, but did not replace it by market incentives, resulting in a sharp decline in output. The economy, already suffering from reduced petroleum export revenues, started to collapse. Prices were still fixed, and property was still largely state-owned until after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. For most of the period after World War II until its collapse, Soviet GDP PPP was the second largest in the world, and third in the world during the mid-1980s to 1989, although per capita it was behind that of first world countries. Compared to countries with similar per capita GDP in 1928, the Soviet Union experienced significant growth. In 1990, the Soviet Union had a human development index of 0.920, placing it in the high category of human development. It was the third highest in the Eastern Bloc, behind Czechoslovakia and East Germany, and the 25th in the world of 130 countries. Topic: Energy. The need for fuel declined in the Soviet Union from the 1970s to the 1980s, both per ruble of gross social product and per ruble of industrial product. At the start, this decline grew very rapidly but gradually slowed down between 1970 and 1975. From 1975 and 1980, it grew even slower, only 2.6%. David Wilson, a historian, believed that the gas industry would account for 40% of Soviet fuel production by the end of the century. His theory did not come to fruition because of the USSR's collapse. The USSR, in theory, would have continued to have an economic growth rate of 2-2.5% during the 1990s because of Soviet energy fields. However, the energy sector faced many difficulties, among them the country's high military expenditure and hostile relations with the First World pre era. In 1991, the Soviet Union had a pipeline network of 82,000 kilometers miles for crude oil and another 206,500 kilometers miles for natural gas. Petroleum and petroleum-based products, natural gas, metals, wood, agricultural products, and a variety of manufactured goods, primarily machinery, arms and military equipment, were exported. In the 1970s and 1980s, the Soviet Union heavily relied on fossil fuel exports to earn hard currency. At its peak in 1988, it was the largest producer and second largest exporter of crude oil, surpassed only by Saudi Arabia. Topic. Science and technology The Soviet Union placed great emphasis on science and technology within its economy, however, the most remarkable Soviet successes in technology, such as producing the world's first space satellite, typically were the responsibility of the military. Lenin believed that the USSR would never overtake the developed world if it remained as technologically backward as it was upon its founding. 
Soviet authorities proved their commitment to Lenin's belief by developing massive networks, research and development organizations. In the early 1960s, the Soviets awarded 40% of chemistry PhDs to women, compared to only 5% who received such a degree in the United States. By 1989, Soviet scientists were among the world's best trained specialists in several areas, such as energy physics, selected areas of medicine, mathematics, welding and military technologies. Due to rigid state planning and bureaucracy, the Soviets remained far behind technologically in chemistry, biology, and computers when compared to the First World. Under the Reagan administration, Project Socrates determined that the Soviet Union addressed the acquisition of science and technology in a manner that was radically different from what the U.S. was using. In the case of the U.S., economic prioritization was being used for indigenous research and development as the means to acquire science and technology in both the private and public sectors. In contrast, the Soviet Union was offensively and defensively maneuvering in the acquisition and utilization of the worldwide technology, to increase the competitive advantage that they acquired from the technology, while preventing the U.S. from acquiring a competitive advantage. However, in addition, the Soviet Union's technology-based planning was executed in a centralized, government-centric manner that greatly hindered its flexibility. It was this significant lack of flexibility that was exploited by the U.S. to undermine the strength of the Soviet Union and thus foster its reform. Topic. Transport Transport was a key component of the nation's economy. The economic centralization of the late 1920s and 1930s led to the development of infrastructure on a massive scale, most notably the establishment of Aeroflot, an aviation enterprise. The country had a wide variety of modes of transport by land, water and air. However, due to bad maintenance, much of the road, water and Soviet civil aviation transport were outdated and technologically backward compared to the First World. Soviet rail transport was the largest and most intensively used in the world. It was also better developed than most of its Western counterparts. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, Soviet economists were calling for the construction of more roads to alleviate some of the burden from the railways and to improve the Soviet government budget. The street network and automotive industry remained underdeveloped, and dirt roads were common outside major cities. Soviet maintenance projects proved unable to take care of even the few roads the country had. By the early to mid-1980s, the Soviet authorities tried to solve the road problem by ordering the construction of new ones. Meanwhile, the automobile industry was growing at a faster rate than road construction. The underdeveloped road network led to a growing demand for public transport. Despite improvements, several aspects of the transport sector were still riddled with problems due to outdated infrastructure, lack of investment, corruption, and bad decision making. Soviet authorities were unable to meet the growing demand for transport infrastructure and services. The Soviet Merchant Navy was one of the largest in the world. Topic: Demographics. Excess deaths over the course of World War I and the Russian Civil War including the post-war famine amounted to a combined total of 18 million, some 10 million in the 1930s, and more than 26 million in 1941-5. The post-war Soviet population was 45 to 50 million smaller than it would have been if pre-war demographic growth had continued. According to Catherine Marydale. Reasonable estimate would place the total number of excess deaths for the whole period somewhere around 60 million. The birth rate of the USSR decreased from 44.0 per thousand in 1926 to 18.0 in 1974, largely due to increasing urbanization and the rising average age of marriages. The mortality rate demonstrated a gradual decrease as well, from 23.7 per thousand in 1926 to 8.7 in 1974. In general, the birth rates of the southern republics in Transcaucasia and Central Asia were considerably higher than those in the northern parts of the Soviet Union, and in some cases even increased in the post-World War II period, a phenomenon partly attributed to slower rates of urbanization and traditionally earlier marriages in the southern republics. 
Soviet Europe moved towards sub-replacement fertility, while Soviet Central Asia continued to exhibit population growth well above replacement level fertility. The late 1960s and the 1970s witnessed a reversal of the declining trajectory of the rate of mortality in the USSR, and was especially notable among men of working age, but was also prevalent in Russia and other predominantly Slavic areas of the country. An analysis of the official data from the late 1980s showed that after worsening in the late 1970s and the early 1980s, adult mortality began to improve again. The infant mortality rate increased from 24.7 in 1970 to 27.9 in 1974. Some researchers regarded the rise as largely real, a consequence of worsening health conditions and services. The rises in both adult and infant mortality were not explained or defended by Soviet officials, and the Soviet government simply stopped publishing all mortality statistics for ten years. Soviet demographers and health specialists remained silent about the mortality increases until the late 1980s, when the publication of mortality data resumed and researchers could delve into the real causes. Topic. Education. Anatoly Lunacharsky became the first People's Commissar for Education of Soviet Russia. At the beginning, the Soviet authorities placed great emphasis on the elimination of illiteracy. People who were literate were automatically hired as teachers. For a short period, quality was sacrificed for quantity. By 1940, Joseph Stalin could announce that illiteracy had been eliminated. Throughout the 1930s social mobility rose sharply, which has been attributed to Soviet reforms in education. In the aftermath of the Great Patriotic War, the country's educational system expanded dramatically. This expansion had a tremendous effect. In the 1960s, nearly all Soviet children had access to education, the only exception being those living in remote areas. Nikita Khrushchev tried to make education more accessible, making it clear to children that education was closely linked to the needs of society. Education also became important in giving rise to the new man. Citizens directly entering the workforce had the constitutional right to a job and to free vocational training. The country's system of education was highly centralized and universally accessible to all citizens, with affirmative action for applicants from nations associated with cultural backwardness. However, as part of the general anti-Semitic policy, an unofficial Jewish quota was applied in the leading institutions of higher education by subjecting Jewish applicants to harsher entrance examinations. The Brezhnev era also introduced a rule that required all university applicants to present a reference from the local Komsomol party secretary. According to statistics from 1986, the number of higher education students per the population of 10,000 was 181 for the USSR, compared to 517 for the US. Topic. Ethnic groups The Soviet Union was a very ethnically diverse country, with more than 100 distinct ethnic groups. The total population was estimated at 293 million in 1991. According to a 1990 estimate, the majority were Russians 50.78%, followed by Ukrainians 15.45%, and Uzbeks 5.84%. All citizens of the USSR had their own ethnic affiliation. The ethnicity of a person was chosen at the age of 16 by the child's parents. If the parents did not agree, the child was automatically assigned the ethnicity of the father. Partly due to Soviet policies, some of the smaller minority ethnic groups were considered part of larger ones, such as the Mingrelians of Georgia, who were classified with the linguistically related Georgians. Some ethnic groups voluntarily assimilated, while others were brought in by force. Russians, Belarusians, and Ukrainians shared close cultural ties, while other groups did not. With multiple nationalities living in the same territory, ethnic antagonisms developed over the years. Members of various ethnicities participated in the legislative bodies of Soviet Union. Organs of power like the Politburo, the Secretariat of the Central Committee, etc., were formally ethnically neutral, but in reality, ethnic Russians were overrepresented. Although there were also non Russian leaders in the Soviet leadership, such as Joseph Stalin, Grigory Zinoviev, Nikolai Podgorny, or Andrei Gromyko. During the Soviet era, a great number of ethnic Russians and Ukrainians migrated to other Soviet republics and many of them settled there. According to the last Soviet census in 1989, the Russian diaspora in the Soviet republics had reached 25 millions. 
Topic: <laughs> Health. In 1917, before the revolution, health conditions were significantly behind those of developed countries. As Lenin later noted, "...either the lice will defeat socialism, or socialism will defeat the lice." The Soviet principle of health care was conceived by the People's Commissariat for Health in 1918. Health care was to be controlled by the state and would be provided to its citizens free of charge, this at the time being a revolutionary concept. Article 42 of the 1977 Soviet Constitution gave all citizens the right to health protection and free access to any health institutions in the USSR. Before Leonid Brezhnev became General Secretary, the health care system of the Soviet Union was held in high esteem by many foreign specialists. This changed however, from Brezhnev's accession and Mikhail Gorbachev's tenure as leader, the Soviet health care system was heavily criticized for many basic faults, such as the quality of service and the unevenness in its provision. Minister of Health Yevgeny Chazov, during the 19th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, while highlighting such Soviet successes as having the most doctors and hospitals in the world, recognized the system's areas for improvement and felt that billions of Soviet rubles were squandered. After the Socialist Revolution, the life expectancy for all age groups went up. This statistic in itself was seen by some that the socialist system was superior to the capitalist system. These improvements continued into the 1960s, when Soviet statistics indicated that the life expectancy in the Soviet Union briefly surpassed that of the United States. Life expectancy started to decline in the 1970s, possibly because of alcohol abuse. At the same time, infant mortality began to rise. After 1974, the government stopped publishing statistics on this. This trend can be partly explained by the number of pregnancies rising drastically in the Asian part of the country where infant mortality was highest, while declining markedly in the more developed European part of the Soviet Union. Topic. Language The Soviet government headed by Vladimir Lenin gave small language groups their own writing systems. The development of these writing systems was very successful, even though some flaws were detected. During the later days of the USSR, countries with the same multilingual situation implemented similar policies. A serious problem when creating these writing systems was that the languages differed dialectally greatly from each other. When a language had been given a writing system and appeared in a notable publication, that language would attain official language status. There were many minority languages which never received their own writing system, therefore their speakers were forced to have a second language. There are examples where the Soviet government retreated from this policy, most notable under Stalin's regime, where education was discontinued in languages which were not widespread enough. These languages were then assimilated into another language, mostly Russian. During the Great Patriotic War, some minority languages were banned, and their speakers accused of collaborating with the enemy. As the most widely spoken of the Soviet Union's many languages, Russian de facto functioned as an official language, as the language of interethnic communication. Russian, Azik Meznationalnogo Obscenia, but only assumed the de jure status as the official national language in 1990. Religion Christianity and Islam had the greatest number of adherents among the Soviet state's religious citizens. Eastern Christianity predominated among Christians, with Russia's traditional Russian Orthodox Church being the Soviet Union's largest Christian denomination. About 90% of the Soviet Union's Muslims were Sunnis, with Shias being concentrated in Azerbaijan. Smaller groups included Roman Catholics, Jews, Buddhists, and a variety of Protestant denominations, especially Baptists and Lutherans. Religious influence had been strong in the Russian Empire. The Russian Orthodox Church enjoyed a privileged status as the Church of the Monarchy and took part in carrying out official state functions. The immediate period following the establishment of the Soviet state included a struggle against the Orthodox Church, which the revolutionaries considered an ally of the former ruling classes. In Soviet law, the freedom to hold religious services was constitutionally guaranteed, although the ruling Communist Party regarded religion as incompatible with the Marxist spirit of scientific materialism. 
In practice, the Soviet system subscribed to a narrow interpretation of this right, and in fact utilized a range of official measures to discourage religion and curb the activities of religious groups. The 1918 Council of People's Commissars decree establishing the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic RSFSR as a secular state also decreed that, the teaching of religion in all places where subjects of general instruction are taught is forbidden. Citizens may teach and may be taught religion privately. Among further restrictions, those adopted in 1929, a half decade into Stalin's rule, included express prohibitions on a range of church activities, including meetings for organized Bible study. Both Christian and non Christian establishments were shut down by the thousands in the 1920s and 1930s. By 1940, as many as 90% of the churches, synagogues, and mosques that had been operating in 1917 were closed. Convinced that religious anti-Sovietism had become a thing of the past with most Soviet Christians, and with the looming threat of war, the Stalin regime began shifting to a more moderate religion policy in the late 1930s. Soviet religious establishments overwhelmingly rallied to support the war effort during the Soviet war with Nazi Germany. Amid other accommodations to religious faith after Nazi Germany attacked the Soviet Union, churches were reopened, Radio Moscow began broadcasting a religious hour, and a historic meeting between Stalin and Orthodox Church leader Patriarch Sergius of Moscow was held in 1943. Stalin had the support of the majority of the religious people in the Soviet Union even through the late 1980s. The general tendency of this period was an increase in religious activity among believers of all faiths. The Soviet establishment under General Secretary Nikita Khrushchev's leadership clashed with the churches in 1958 to 1964, a period when atheism was emphasized in the educational curriculum, and numerous state publications promoted atheistic views. During this period, the number of churches fell from 20,000 to 10,000 from 1959 to 1965, and the number of synagogues dropped from 500 to 97. The number of working mosques also declined, falling from 1,500 to 500 within a decade. Religious institutions remained monitored by the Soviet government, but churches, synagogues, temples, and mosques were all given more leeway in the Brezhnev era. Official relations between the Orthodox Church and the Soviet government again warmed to the point that the Brezhnev government twice honored Orthodox Patriarch Alexei I with the Order of the Red Banner of Labor. A poll conducted by Soviet authorities in 1982 recorded 20% of the Soviet population as active religious believers. <laughs> <laughs> Military Legacy Topic. Culture The culture of the Soviet Union passed through several stages during the USSR's 69-year existence. During the first 11 years following the revolution 1918 to 1929, there was relative freedom and artists experimented with several different styles to find a distinctive Soviet style of art. Lenin wanted art to be accessible to the Russian people. On the other hand, hundreds of intellectuals, writers, and artists were exiled or executed, and their work banned, for example Nikolai Gumilyov shot for alleged conspiring against the Bolshevik regime and Yevgeny Zamyatin banned. The government encouraged a variety of trends. In art and literature, numerous schools, some traditional and others radically experimental, proliferated. Communist writers Maxim Gorky and Vladimir Mayakovsky were active during this time. Film, as a means of influencing a largely illiterate society, received encouragement from the state. Much of director Sergei Eisenstein's best work dates from this period. Later, during Stalin's rule, Soviet culture was characterized by the rise and domination of the government imposed style of socialist realism, with all other trends being severely repressed, with rare exceptions, for example, Mikhail Bulgakov's works. Many writers were imprisoned and killed, following the Khrushchev thaw of the late 1950s and early 1960s, censorship was diminished. During this time, a distinctive period of Soviet culture developed characterized by conformist public life and intense focus on personal life. Greater experimentation in art forms were again permissible, with the result that more sophisticated and subtly critical work began to be produced. The regime loosened its emphasis on socialist realism, thus, for instance, many protagonists of the novels of author Yuri Trifonov concerned themselves with problems of daily life rather than with building socialism. 
an underground dissident literature, known as Samizdat, developed during this late period. In architecture the Khrushchev era mostly focused on functional design as opposed to the highly decorated style of Stalin's epoch. In the second half of the 1980s, Gorbachev's policies of perestroika and glasnost significantly expanded freedom of expression throughout the Soviet Union in the media and press. Topic sport Founded on 20 July 1924 in Moscow, Sovetsky Sport was the first sports newspaper of the Soviet Union. The Olympic Committee of the USSR formed on April 21, 1951, and the IOC recognized the new body in its 45th session the 7th of May 1951. In the same year, when the Soviet representative Konstantin Andrianov became an IOC member, the USSR officially joined the Olympic movement. The 1952 Summer Olympics in Helsinki thus became first Olympic Games for Soviet athletes. The Soviet Union national ice hockey team won nearly every world championship and Olympic tournament between 1954 and 1991 and never failed to medal in any International Ice Hockey Federation tournament they competed in. The advent of the state-sponsored full-time amateur athlete of the Eastern Bloc countries further eroded the ideology of the pure amateur, as it put the self-financed amateurs of the Western countries at a disadvantage. The Soviet Union entered teams of athletes who were all nominally students, soldiers, or working in a profession. In reality, the Soviet state paid many of these competitors to train on a full time basis. Nevertheless, the IOC held to the traditional rules regarding amateurism. A 1989 report by a committee of the Australian Senate claimed that there is hardly a medal winner at the Moscow Games, certainly not a gold medal winner, who is not on one sort of drug or another, usually several kinds. The Moscow Games might well have been called the Chemists Games. A member of the IOC Medical Commission, Manfred Donick, privately ran additional tests with a new technique for identifying abnormal levels of testosterone by measuring its ratio to epitestosterone in urine. 20% of the specimens he tested, including those from 16 gold medalists, would have resulted in disciplinary proceedings had the tests been official. The results of Donick's unofficial tests later convinced the IOC to add his new technique to their testing protocols. The first documented case of blood doping occurred at the 1980 Summer Olympics when a runner was transfused with two pints of blood before winning medals in the 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters. Documentation obtained in 2016 revealed the Soviet Union's plans for a statewide doping system in track and field in preparation for the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. Dated prior to the USSR's decision to boycott the 1984 Games, the document detailed the existing steroids operations of the program, along with suggestions for further enhancements. Dr. Sergei Portugalov of the Institute for Physical Culture, prepared the communication, directed to the Soviet Union's head of track and field. Portugalov later became one of the main figures involved in the implementation of Russian doping prior to the 2016 Summer Olympics. Topic see also Collective Security Treaty Organization Commonwealth of Independent States Communism Dissolution of the Soviet Union Eurasian Economic Union Ideocracy Index of Soviet Union Related Articles Neo-Sovietism Orphans in the Soviet Union Soviet Empire France-Russia Relations Hashtag USSR, 1918-1991 Topic Conflicts Cold War Operation Barbarossa Russian Civil War Soviet Invasion of Poland Topic Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Ambler John, Shaw, Dennis J. B., Simons, Leslie 1985. Soviet and East European Transport Problems. Taylor & Francis. ISBN 978-0-7099-0557-8. Comrie, Bernard The Languages of the Soviet Union. Cambridge University Press Archive. ISBN 978-0-521-29877-3. Davies, Robert, Wheatcroft, Stephen The Industrialization of Soviet Russia Vol. 5, The Years of Hunger, Soviet Agriculture 1931–1933. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-230-23855-8. Fisher, Lewis The Life of Lenin. London, Weidenfeld and Nicholson. Jans, Dennis World Christianity and Marxism. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-511944-2. Lane, David Stewart Soviet Society under Perestroika. Routledge. 
ISBN 978-0-415-07600-5. Leggett, George The Cheka, Lenin's Political Police. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-822552-2. Lewin, Moshe Lenin's Last Struggle. Translated by Sheridan Smith, A. M. London, Faber and Faber. Rayfield, Donald 2004. Stalin and His Hangman, An Authoritative Portrait of a Tyrant and Those Who Served Him. Viking Press. ISBN 978-0-375-75771-6. Service, Robert 2000. Lenin, A Biography. London, Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-333-72625-9. Simon, Gerard 1974. Church, State, and Opposition in the USSR. Berkeley and Los Angeles, University of California Press. ISBN 978-0-520-02612-4. Volkoganov, Dmitry Lenin, Life and Legacy. Translated by Shuckman, Harold. London, HarperCollins. ISBN 978-0-00-255123-6. White, James D. 2001. Lenin, The Practice and Theory of Revolution. European History in Perspective. Basingstoke, England, Palgrave. ISBN 978-0-333-72157-5. Wilson, David. 1983. The Demand for Energy in the Soviet Union. Taylor and Francis. ISBN 978-0-7099-2704-4. World Bank and OECD 1991. A Study of the Soviet Economy. 3. International Monetary Fund. ISBN 9789264134. Lewin, Moshe 2001. Social Identities in Revolutionary Russia. UK, Palgrave. ISBN 978-0-333-92947-6. Retrieved 26 May 2012. Warshawski Lapidus, Gale Women in Soviet Society, Equality, Development, and Social Change. Berkeley, California, University of California Press. ISBN 978-0-520-03938-4. Wheatcroft, Stephen The Scale and Nature of German and Soviet Repression and Mass Killings, 1930–45. PDF. Europe-Asia Studies. 48 8, 1319–1353. doi, 10.1080, JSTOR 152781. Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Wikimedia Atlas of the Soviet Union Impressions of Soviet Russia, by John Dewey. A Country Study, Soviet Union former Majority in former Soviet states believe breakup was harmful mistake, poll. RT, 21 December 2013.